Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. O I A A A A A H A H I Finder Mathematicians, welcome back to another episode on Papa Flemish Advent Calendar. And it's only five or six more days, I suppose. And then I'm already done with this shit. Holy smokes. If you feel like supporting the Advent Calendar, make sure to make use of link... <laughs> Here. Um, to get 15% uh, over on everything on my Teespring shop, as well as 10% over on Stamage.com. Today... We are going to take a look at this limit right here that I have found on one of my old um, anal <laughs> um, papers. It was a homework paper. I still have it lying around somewhere. Um, yeah, there was this one right here. Those were my notes. And we had to show that this limit equals to something. What the limit is going to be, we are going to see in a second. And I'm going to solve it three ways. We are going to go with the beginner way. Then with the pro way, and at the very end with the rigorous way, you could say. So it goes beginner, um, intermediate, and then pro or some shit of that sort. And we're going to start with the beginner way. And the beginner way is kind of heuristically, you could say. Why not just write everything out and see what we are going to get? So I'm going to denote the limit as x approaches infinity as being capital L x factorial we all know is the same as x times x minus 1 times blah 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 up until 2 and then times 1 divided by and x to the x power is x multiplied with itself x times so x times x times dot 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 up until x times x what you're going to notice is that both the numerator and denominator consist of x terms overall so if you have three factorial, it's three times two times one, three terms. Three to the third power, not three power, is going to be three times three times three. So both have x terms. So why not make use of the limit rules, which state if an independent limit exists, then we can split this whole limit up into the limit as x approaches infinity of x divided by x times L of x minus one divided by x and so on up until the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 divided by x times the limit of uh, 1 divided by x. And when we break this up, you are going to notice something. Those are finitely many terms. So if one of those terms would be equal to 0, the whole thing would vanish. We just need to check if all of those terms actually make it, if none of those diverges individually. And they don't. x divided by x is 1. The limit as x approaches infinity of 1 is going to be equal to 1. Now, x minus 1 divided by x is the same as um, x divided by x minus 1 divided by x. As x approaches infinity, that part is going to vanish. x divided by x, as mentioned before, is 1. So this limit right here is going to turn to 1 once again. It goes on and on up until we reach this point. 2 divided by x goes to 0 overall, and then 1 divided by x also 0. So we have a lot of ones multiplied together, but also a lot of zeros resulting in a limit going to zero overall. Now this right here is the beginner way, just making use of the limit rules. And heuristically, you can already see that this is going that way into that direction because x to the x power is going to grow harder than x factorial. It grows at a more rapid rate, meaning as x approaches infinity, the denominator is going to overtake the numerator meaning it's going to dominate the whole thing and hence we get a 1 over infinity situation resulting in positive 0 in our case. Now that was the beginner way. Now we are going to go over to the pro way you could say. One where you can basically see the answer at a glance and you can make use of all the things that you have learned in your anal class. For that I'm going to turn x factorial into something of the form x to the x and Factorials, when it comes to x going to infinity, always scream for the asymptotic formula, also called Stirling's formula. We all know, if you are a frequent watcher of this channel, that x factorial, when x approaches infinity, is asymptotically equal, so both functions basically behave the same as x approaches infinity, they are really close to one another, as the square root of 2 pa times x, times x divided by e to the x power. Or if we multiply all of this out, it's going to result in square root of 2 pi x times x to the x divided by e to the x. And now we can plug this 
into here because they are asymptotically equal as x approaches infinity. Meaning our limit is going to turn into the limit as x approaches infinity of, we are going to get the square root of 2 pi x and times x to the x power divided by e to the x, all of that divided by x to the x. You are going to notice that x to the x is going to cancel out. Now, we can break up the 2 pi x, the, the square root into the square root of 2 pi, which is independent of the limit. We can drag it to the front times the square root of x, leaving us with the limit as x approaches infinity of the square root of x divided by e to the x. And obviously, it's the same argument as up here if we take a look at the graph, for example. Then the square root of x looks like this. Very slow, ladies and gentlemen. But e to the x looks like this. It's a fast fucking boy. It grows so much harder than square root of x, meaning it's going to overtake the whole thing in the limit, all overall going to zero. How can you prove this even more? You can make use of everything in ALO that you have learned. And if we have an infinity over infinity situation, which we do, we can use L'Hopital. It's a bit cheating, but you can do so, obviously. Now, using L'Hopital, we are going to take the derivative of the numerator and denominator independently. In the denominator, we are going to get e to the x. And in the numerator, the derivative of the square root of x, or in other words, x to the one half power, is going to be one half times x to the negative one half, which is one over the square root of x. One half is independent of the limit. We can drag it to the front. And one over square root of x, the square root of x, can go into the denominator, leaving us overall with the square root of 2 pi divided by 2 times the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 divided by the square root of x times e to the x. We get an obvious 1 over infinity situation with the whole thing going to 0 in the process. Now this right here feels a tiny little bit cheaty to be honest and I think the beginner way is a bit nicer than the Stirling formula stuff that we did here. But we also want to make it kind of rigorous. And for this, we are going to take the heuristic approach, which works for a lot of limits. And we are going to turn it into something that you could show off in your anal class. And you would get a pat on the back or the shoulder from your anal teacher. Or maybe you are going to get a pat on the butt from your anal teacher, if it's anal. I don't know. Don't ask me. I never experienced something like that with um, Uncle Jeff. Jeff? over in my anal class. <laughs> okay, with that out of the way, we are going to take this approach right here to the next level a tiny little bit. I want you guys to notice something. If we take a look at our x factorial, which is the same as x times x minus 1 times dot 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 up until 2 times 1, you are going to notice something if we compare it with x to the x power. As mentioned before, we can basically since both of those have x terms, distribute the x down here from the denominator into all the parts up here in the numerator. So what we are going to do instead of dragging those in, into there and splitting up the limit, we are going to compare stuff. Analy uh, analysis, so anal, is the basically part of mathematics where you make estimates rigorous. And this is exactly what we are going to do. We are going to bring an order relation into the game here. Now x to the x power is x times x times dot 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 up until x times x. And what you are going to notice is that x is equal to x, obviously. Now, x is going to be greater than x minus 1. The same with x being greater than x minus 2. x is also greater than 2. And x is also greater than 1 under the condition that we say for our estimate that this holds for all x greater or equal to 1. Then this right here is going to be a greater or equal order relation, meaning we can actually form an order relationship here between x to the x power and x factorial. Namely, for all x being greater or equal to 1, which we can take as a valid estimate before, because we are looking at the limit as x approaches infinity, and infinity is a bit far away from 1, so that works out most definitely. Okay, it's a huge neighborhood away, but it does do for our estimate that we are looking for. We can find that x factorial is less or equal to x to the x power for all x being greater or equal to 1. What you are also going to notice is that 
if you want to find the second estimate and later make use of a nice theorem in analysis, this is like a standard procedure. And this is what we had to use in our exercise too, by the way. You are going to notice that x factorial is always going to be greater or equal to 1 for all of our x being greater or equal to 1. If you plug 1 into x factorial, you are going to get 1 factorial, which is 1. Same for x to the x power 1 to the first power is going to be equal to 1. For the initial value of 1, the first starting value in our interval, this is always going to be the case. But for all the other x's that come afterwards, 1.1 1 .1 and so on, it's going to hold that x factorial is greater or equal to 1 and also x to the x power is greater or equal to x factorial and also 1. Now, we want to trace this order relation back to our limit because what we want to use is the so-called sandwich theorem, also called squeeze theorem, I suppose, but I like sandwiches more, so we are going to go with sandwich theorem. What we want to get is x factorial divided by x to the x power. So what we are going to do is we are going to divide the whole order relation by x to the x power, leaving us, and you can do this because all the x to the x powers for all x being greater or equal to 1 are going to be non-zero, obviously, leaving us overall with 1 divided by x to the x is less or equal to x factorial divided by x to the x is less or equal to x to the x power divided by x to the x power. Now, if you want to use the squeeze theorem, meaning we want to squeeze the limit of the thing we are looking for between two limits showing overall that those two outer limits are equal and with the greater or equal order relationship, the greater is going to go away and leaving us with an equals equivalence relationship. But what you're going to notice is if we were to apply the limit as x approaches infinity here, then on 1 over x to the x, it's going to go to 0. But on x to the x divided by x to the x, it's going to go to 1 because this and that is going to cancel out, leaving us with 1 in the process. So we can squeeze x factorial divided by x to the x in between those two for now. But here comes a nice fact about the x factorial in, namely that on the one hand, x factorial has x many terms, but we can also simply ignore this times 1 because it's the multiplicative identity. If we were to ignore this one right here, then we can also take away this x that we have right here and we are going to turn the x to the x power into x to the x minus 1 and still keep the order relationship going. We have x minus 1 terms here and x minus 1 terms here. And just by the same arguments, x to the x minus 1 power is always going to be greater or equal to x factorial for all x being greater or equal to 1. So instead of taking x to the x power here, we are going to cheat the tie a little bit. We are going to go the anal route and we are going to take x to the x minus 1 here instead. And now what you're going to notice, x to the x minus 1 is the same as x to the x divided by x. So we have it times x down here. This and that is going to cancel out, leaving us overall with the order relationship of 1 divided by x to the x is less or equal to x factorial divided by x to the x is less or equal to 1 over x. And if we now apply our fabulous limit, you're going to notice that the limit on the left-hand side is going to approach 0. The limit on the right-hand side, 1 over infinity, you can say, also goes to 0. But we know since this order relationship is true for all x greater or equal to 1, and if we apply the limit and both result in 0, we are not preserving our original order relation as being greater or equal here. No, we can conclude that both of those must be equal to the inner limit, concluding in the process that the limit as x approaches infinity of x factorial divided by x to the x power is going to go to zero. And this concludes the argumentation using the squeeze theorem. And I think those are always very nice exercises that employ this kind of theorem because it's, it's, it's rigorous, but it also feels so, so nice. It's, it's right and wrong at the same time. You are thinking about shit and maybe you can squeeze it in and then you can prove a limit. But this is what anal is all about. It's all about squeezing your estimates in, looking how you can estimate something in a better way such that you can get your desired results. It's the same thing with subsequences in this shit. Anal is absolutely crazy.
It's seriously a crazy part of mathematics and I just love it and I hope you did enjoy this video too. Three difficulties of solving the limit x factorial divided by x to the x. And if you didn't enjoy it, went a little wine. If you didn't enjoy what I've seen today, oh my goodness, I just came from work today. <laughs> I need to take a break for once, so many days. Then make sure to buy some merch or whatever, or subscribe to the channel, or watch the other advent calendar videos. Now, until next video, I see you guys. Flimp day. See ya! Yeah.